Hi, Chris Gellert here again with Pinnacle Training Systems. We're back again talking more about the spine. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper in some of the anatomy, which is a little boring, but I think just understand a little more, will help you understand me with clients with injuries, with spinal injuries, with neck injuries, and just kind of gives you more of an understanding about what's kind of going on. So looking at the backside again, we talked earlier about the spinous process. We talked about the TP, which is the transverse. I want to go into the front, which is the disc. So even though you can't see it, there's a disc between each bone. And the disc is basically made up of um, gelatinous structures. Around the disc is basically collagen. And collagen is a protein, it's called type 1. As we age, that disc starts to diminish or uh, decrease and lose uh, the natural properties such as buoyancy and give, which means in the neck, its ability to absorb stress, same thing in the lower back. So in the annulus, which is around the disc, the annulus is thinner on the back side and is thicker on the front. That's why more disc injuries occur on the back side here. Okay? Um, number two, we talked earlier about that the discs are small in the neck. They go kind of bigger in the middle back and get larger here. Most of the injuries again occur, L4, L5, S1, because people will bend. They will bend and rotate, and you can see that it opens up that space for the disc to pop out or herniate, or it can bulge, which is a small little irritation, to herniate, which is a large irritation. Okay, so that's a, a little thing that's kind of thing to notice. Um, looking back at the muscles I mentioned a little bit earlier, again, you have your upper trapezius from the neck. The C7, T1 to T5 is your middle trapezius, T6, T12 is that lower trapezius, was weaker biomechanically. You have your QL, which goes from your 12th rib to the iliac crest, and that muscle is a, a stabilizer. Right next to that muscle is the multifidus, which you'll see in your manual. The multifidus is a small little muscle, goes all the way from the tailbone up to the um, spine or the cranium area. We'll go back to the middle back. C7 to T1 is your rhomboid minor. T1 to T, I'm sorry, T2 to T5 is your rhomboid major. And they again retract the shoulder. And then the, the larger, you know, muscle, the lats, uh, is on the outside. It wraps around from T6 to T12. It does that rotation and extension of the spine. Okay, so those are the primary muscles of the spine that I want to review. When we look at the shoulder and the rotator cuff, you know, there's a lot of muscles. The main thing that I want you to take away from this is understanding that the, the front four primary muscles are the subscapularis, which goes um, the subscapularis fossa and checks on the uh, sternum area. On the back side, there is teres minor and teres major. And then on the top is supraspinatus which goes from the supraspinous fossa to the greater tubercle. And that muscle abducts the shoulder. Subscapularis on the front does, again, that rotation or in rotation. It also does horizontal adduction. If we go to the back side again with the shoulder from the infraspinatus and teres minor, that does extra-rotation or this motion here. And then again, supraspinatus on the top it does abduction. So abduction with the deltoid, meal deltoid, is occurring between the supraspinatus from that initially zero to 15 degrees. From 15 on, the meal deltoid assists with raising your arm up and then into full abduction on the side. Forward flexion, which you can see here from the humerus, that's from the anterior deltoid, which is located on the front again. And then we talk about extension of the shoulder or here, that is going to be the posterior deltoid. And then lastly, when I go into horizontal adduction, that's going to be posterior deltoid as well, which is located in the back part of the shoulder. Okay? So those are the four primary and some additional muscles that make up the shoulder. Uh, the other part I want to talk about just briefly within the shoulder is there's a capsule. Capsule is like a rubber band. Its job is to provide support and, and reinforce. You have three ligaments in the shoulder, in the front, superior, middle, and inferior glenoidal ligament. On the back of the shoulder, you have the posterior capsule. So you have one in the back, one in the front. And then you've got ligaments on the top 
the chromocavicular ligament, core cavicular ligament, and the core chromocavicular ligament, which are three primary stabilizing ligaments on the AC joint. The other thing too I forgot to mention, four primary shoulder joints, sternum or sternoclavicular joint, right from the sternum, you've got your AC or chromocavicular joint, you have your glenohumeral joint which is from the humerus into the fossa which is like a C, and in the back which again is the scapula which stands, which goes on the upper thoracic, so the scapula basically glides and rotates on the thoracic region, what's called the scapula thoracic joint, should be awkwardly rotate, okay? So when you're looking at clients move and, and, and how they move, you should look at also more about, uh, think about what muscles are working, uh, what muscles could be short, what muscles could be tight. And a lot of clients typically in patients stand with their bodies forward and flex, so they're going to have tightness in the pecs, tightness in the um, neck accessory muscles, and you can imagine that if these are tight, well, that makes the posterior muscles, these guys, rhomboids, um, upper traps, lower and elongated, okay? Um, the other thing that we say is when we look at movement is the quality movement more than anything else, and how do they move? If someone moves their shoulder, and they're doing this and juddering, that might be a weakness issue. If they're doing it smoothly and not doing it with any kind of restriction, you know that the joint is pretty much clear. So assessment wise, you know, we're going to look at in this next section some assessment techniques that you can use at home with your clients and think about inside what's going on in the joint. Again, we talk about articular surfaces moving versus osteomotion, which is in the spine. Think about what muscles are working in the, on the shoulder and the rotator cuff. More importantly, which ones are shortened and which ones are going to be elongated or in weak.